God bless you this morning. We thank God that you are joining us this morning for our Sunday morning worship. God has blessed us uh, to come together one more time, and we are so thankful to God that he has allowed us this opportunity. And let me briefly make a couple of announcements uh, before we get into the service. Uh, one, is that is at the end of this month, on September 28th, 29th, and 30th, at 7 p.m. each night, we will be preaching, doing a three-night revival uh, by way of media. So join us on September 28th, 29th, and 30th at 7 p.m. for a blessed revival. Theme for the revival is breaking the chains. We need to be revived, we need to be restored, we need to break loose from a lot of things. So we will be preaching on those three nights on the theme, Breaking the Chain. Also this morning, we want to give a shout out to all of our young people who are taking the ACT test today. We pray for you that all of you will make an excellent score on the test. We also pray for those who are back in school this season, getting back into school. Classes have started almost everywhere. There are a few people that are still waiting, but soon everybody will be in school by one mean or another. And I just want to remind parents to be vigilant about your children using social media for school, even though it is the school's website and things uh, are always set up with their security measures in place. Believe me, the devil don't care whose device it is. He doesn't care whose site it is. He will work to find a way to get in. So be vigilant so that you will ensure that your children are watching school programs and not some mess that's going to get them in trouble down the line. With that in mind, we're going to move right along. And uh, before we get into the message, Sister Lyle is going to lead us in prayer this morning. And then we're going to do just a little bit of amazing grace and jump right into the word this morning. Good morning. God told us to pray for every situation and every circumstance. He told us, matter of fact, he said, do not cease praying, but pray at all times. It doesn't have, to have anything to do with the way you feel. It doesn't have anything to do with where you are. God said, pray about everything. So let's bow our heads today and honor God in prayer. Most gracious and loving Father, the lover of our soul, the lifter of our heads, the one who allowed his son to die for us, his only begotten son to die for us, because we had no one else to go to the cross for us but his only begotten son. And Lord, we honor you with a thanksgiving. We honor you, O oh God, with rejoicing. We honor you, O oh God, with our prayer. We honor you, O oh Heavenly Father, because you are a loving God. You are a kind God. You are a forgiving God. We thank you, O oh God, for being the healer of every sickness, O oh Heavenly Father. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for directing our path every single day of our lives. We thank you, O oh God, for showing us your way, O oh God, and showing us your path in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God, to desire you, O oh Lord, as a deer desires water. Help us, O oh God, to desire you every single day. I thank you, O oh God, for directing us right now as we call upon your holy name. We thank you, O oh God, we invite your Holy Spirit in right now. And Lord, we ask you, O oh God, that when we don't know the way to take, O oh Heavenly Father, to trust you to lead us and to show us, O oh God. We don't know the way without you guiding us, Heavenly Father. Thank you, O oh God, for guiding us. Thank you, O oh God, we put our trust in you. You told us, God, not to walk by what we see, but to walk by faith, O oh God, no matter how we feel, no matter what's going on, to walk by faith, O oh God. Lord, we put our faith, faith in you, O oh Heavenly Father, knowing that you've already worked things out for our good. We 
put our faith in you, O oh God, knowing that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We put our faith in you, O oh God, knowing, O oh God, that you give us peace that passes all understanding. We put our faith in you, O oh Heavenly Father. We stand on every one of your promises, O oh God. We know, O oh God, that your promises are true. And you don't lie, O oh God, like men do. But you, 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 God, you stand on what you say. And help us, O oh God, as your people to keep our promises as well. We thank you now, O oh Heavenly Father, for blessing the one that's going to bring your word this morning, O oh Heavenly Father. Guard him up, O oh God, in your spirit in the name of Jesus. Help him, O oh God, to speak from your spirit and not from the flesh. We ask, O oh God, you will bless every preached woman, every preached man everywhere, O oh Heavenly Father. Help him, O oh God, to preach your word. Don't let him compromise, O oh God, but let him preach the truth in the name of Jesus. We thank you now, O oh God, for hearing our prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for loving our souls. We thank you, O oh God, right now for being a good God. We honor you, God. We glorify you. We praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. Was mine, but now I see. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Lift your hands wherever you are and praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Sister Lyles. And now for the word this morning. There's a word for us in the book of Psalms. Psalms 133. Psalms 133. And we will begin reading at the first verse. There's only three verses. And we're going to read all three of them. I believe he has three verses. It says... Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew of, that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. And I want to talk to us today from the subject, the beauty of unity, the beauty of unity. Before I get into uh, that, I, I, I need to just give us a little prefix uh, concerning this, and that is, you know, as I thought about it, uh, and I looked at the analogy and the comparison as we talk about unity and the difference in being in the same place and at the same time, I, I, I visualize a choir and how choirs can look good. They can sound good. They dress alike be at the same place at the same time, keeping beat with the music, always in time, but yet sometimes they are not in unity. What are you saying? Uh, sometimes people are in the same place doing the same thing, but the heart is not in it. They look unified but their heart is not in it. How can you tell whether or not they are really unified? Just watch them when they go to rehearsal. 
whether or not they can get along in rehearsal. I'm not talking about an occasional disagreement about how the song is to be sung because so many of us have our own idea of how a song should be sung, but when they cannot come together and agree on the song, when it's not about us, it's all about praising the Lord. Then listen how they get behind the musician's back and talk about the musician and downgrade the musician or how they talk about one another as soon as they are outside the sanctuary, as soon as they leave the choir loft, they start to talk about one another in a negative form. Mm -hmm. That suggests to me that they are not in unity. Then, my brothers and sisters, we come to today's message. Today, as we embark upon the third of these teachings concerning unity, I find it essential that we recall the first of the series teachings, which was entitled A Divided House. From Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, and the following verses, the Lord taught concerning the danger and the ugly unpleasantness of division or diversity. Uh, disunity is a terrible thing. And as we have been able to see how ugly things can get when families are divided, the family unity can be destroyed if a division is not quickly dealt with and family members cannot come together and deal with their issues so that they can be healed. We see it in the unpleasantness of the division in our government, from local government to the national level so much until left and right no longer re represent a pair, but it represents two different kinds. When uh, we look at our body, the human body, we have a left hand and a right hand, and uh, they are a pair. And when they work together, they accomplish great things. The left foot and the right foot must uh, cooperate uh, in order for us to walk, if not, we will not be able to walk. We'll find ourselves simply hopping along or stuck, stuck in one place. The vision is the total opposite of unity. The vision destroys. Unity builds up. The vision creates weakness. Unity creates strength. The vision is caused by jealousy and hatred. Unity is a product of unselfish love. In unity, uh, even though we be not, we may not agree with something, uh, but yet we remain remain connected, uh, so that we will be able to find a point of agreement. It is called learning to understand and appreciate one another. Yes. When there is division. There must be a reconciler, someone who is willing to stand strong and point out all the reasons that there must be a coming together and will not accept the defeat of division. Yes, division is defeat. In marriage, it is called divorce. In the church, it is called heresy. In the government, it is called deadlock. And in all areas, it is defeat. Apostle Paul had to address this issue in the early church, in, in uh, the church at Corinth. In the first chapter and verses 10 through 13, Paul and, had to deal with this issue. In Acts chapter 15, verses 36 through 41, Paul and Barnabas had to deal with their differences to avoid a division concerning John Mark. Yet they found a way to reconcile and work together for the furtherance of the gospel. Because later Paul sent to uh, sent for John Mark, declaring that he is possible in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 11. Now we come to the text today. The text says, take notice. Notice what an awesome 
and wonderful thing it is to be unified. The experience uh, we have when we are unified, when people are unified, especially the people of God, when they can work together and be at peace with one another, not just where people can dress alike and be cordial toward one another. Uh, just like I mentioned earlier, the choir, all in uniform. We have today in our military people who are dressed alike, wearing the same uniform, have taken the same youth, the same oath, but yet you find them killing one another and destroying one another. We have to learn uh, that uh, for that, what true oneness is, uh, we have to take a pattern after the Father and the Son. Uh, the kind of oneness that causes a man or a woman to love others, uh, even as they love themselves, and will do unto others as you desire to have them to do unto you. Not only does it look good, I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that true unity smells good. Well, preacher, how can you say that? When you go uh, to the book of Exodus and uh, verse, chapter 30, I believe it is, in verse 35, somewhere in the book of Exodus around there, you find that God gave instructions uh, on the making of the anointing oil. And in that instruction, the oil was loaded down with perfume such that the odor filled the house. And all who was there not only saw the oil running down, but was able to smell the aroma, and it was precious. It was expensive. It was powerful. And I want you to know today that unity still has the same effect. Unity is powerful. Uh, anytime you divide anything, it weakens it. Have you noticed you put up one two by four, let it stand out there by itself, and it's easily broken. But put all of the two by fours together to build a house, and the wind will blow against that house and build on a sound foundation, and all of the parts are fitly jointed together. It will remain strong and stand in spite of the wind and the rain. Oh, we, we must learn, my brothers and sisters, how to trust God. Oh, it, it was not used. The oil was not just used in just a little damp. It was not just a little bit. It was not used sparingly. Oh, when it was used uh, in the anointing ceremony, it was poured on in such a quantity that it ran down. In chapter 2, verse 2 of Psalms 133, we find that it ran down on Aaron's head, down on his beard, and even down on his garments, down to the skirts of his garments. That is not all. It was compared to the refreshing of the dew at Hermon. We know we see the dew on the grass early in the morning. But I want you to know the dew fall began falling late in the evening. And it refreshes and causes new life, new growth. Uh, in the midst of unity, God command the blessings. What do you mean? Where there is unity, God will bless. If you want uh, to see God do some great things, Beyond your wildest imagination, try coming together. Try working together in his name. Try being united in the name of the Lord. Try coming together in one accord and watch God work. The Holy Spirit will come in when there is unity. Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall receive power after the Spirit come upon you. When you are joined together in one accord, the Spirit of God will begin to work. Yes. When the Spirit of God comes in and there is unity, people will get saved. Sick folks will be healed. Uh, 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 people who are possessed by demons will be delivered. Oppressed and depressed folks will be set free. So let's look at how God blessed. When we go to the book of Deuteronomy 28 
And verses 1 through 14, God, through Moses, pointed out that when you do my will, I will cause all the blessings to come upon you and overtake you. What do you mean? Blessings will chase the righteous. Blessings will hunt down those of God's children who obey him. Blessings will overtake you. Blessings uh, will come on you. You don't have to hunt for the blessings. Just obey God and he will lead you to the blessings or he will lead the blessings to you. Study the word of God and obey the word of God and God will begin to bless you. The church will be blessed. Your home will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Your body will be blessed. The Lord told Joshua in the first chapter, he said, uh, and I'm just paraphrasing that if you follow my commandments, and don't leave the path of righteousness. You will have good success. Yes. But in telling him to keep his commandments, he told him to do it. You got to be bold. You have to be courageous. He commanded him to be strong and of good courage. Three times uh, between verse 1 and verse 9, he told him to be courageous and be, be of good courage. Then in the last verse of chapter 1, he closed it out with the same phrase, be of good courage, be strong, be courageous, be of good courage. The path of righteousness always leads to good success. And when we uh, live in unity, we can't help but to show love for one another. When we live in unity, we let the world know that we are truly children of God. When we live in unity, we care about what matters to one another. In Paul's writing, he said that when we are one body, every member of the body feels uh, the cares and concerns of the rest of the body. Uh, he, he, when when uh, he talks about it, he said that the hand and the feet must work together. Mm -hmm. Let me put it this way. In the church, uh, the pastor and the deacons must work together. The, the choir members and the musicians must work together. The secretaries and the trustees must work together. Every member of the church must work together. And when uh, we begin to work together, it's a beautiful thing uh, in the sight of God and man. Uh, when uh, we begin to do what God's saying, uh, it makes a change in us and it makes a change in things around us. Uh, when uh, we do what God say and work in unity, God will draw people to the body of Christ. Uh, we have to learn, my brothers and sisters, uh, how uh, to treat one another and how to embrace one another. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, uh, God uh, does not uh, look at uh, what color your skin is uh, to, to claim you as his child. Uh, God does not look at your social or economic background uh, to claim you as his child. Uh, God uh, claim us as his children uh, when we believe in Jesus and, and follow his commands. Uh, makes no difference uh, whether you are a billionaire or a pauper. You are all the same in the eyes of God. I know that society have dealt with our heads and caused some of us to believe that we are lesser than anybody else. But I want to remind you today of the song we learn as a child uh, is that Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Red, yellow, black, and white, we are all precious in his sight. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that no matter who you are or where you are, 
No matter what you have or what you do not have, you are valuable to the Lord. He's saying that if I feed the birds and I clothe the lilies of the field, you are more precious to me than they are, and I will take care of you. You just have to remember who you are and whose you are. Let us, my brothers and sisters, embrace one another. Let us learn how to work together. Let us learn how to reach across boundaries and borders and touch the hands of one another and do like the song they sung when I was a child. I don't hear anybody singing it much anymore that said, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Then there was another that said, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That, that's the one thing that there is too little of. We need to learn, my brothers and sisters, that you cannot uh, have God and not have love because the word tells me that God is love and, and you cannot love God and not love his son and God put his breath in every one of us and God uh, let his Holy Spirit uh, be in those who follow after him and obey him and makes no difference what position you're in. You have to answer to God. Unity is an awesome thing. Unity is a beautiful thing. Unity is a precious thing. It does not make you unified because you wear the same name or because you wear clothes that look alike or because you learn how to say the same phrases. Preacher, how can you say that? Well, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He said, If I can speak with the voice of angels and don't have love, it profited me nothing. If I give all of my goods to the poor, give my body to be burned, and don't have love, it profits me nothing. I'm not suggesting that when you give a lot of money, it don't help the people it's given to. But I'm telling you that when the giver gives, and there's no love in his heart when he gives, it doesn't help the giver. And God is waiting on us to get together. He's sending out signals. Sending out warnings. For the church. To get right. Because soon. And soon may be. 50 years. It may be 100 years. But soon. He's coming back. The question is. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? And I'm asking this question of each one of you today. Every person that's hear my voice. If the Lord were to call you today, are you ready? If he snapped his finger right now and said, your time is up, are you ready? Are you ready? But if you're not, you can get ready. Don't, don't go by, I think I'm ready. Get ready. See what the Lord say in the word. He said, believe, mm -hmm. trust, obey, and stick with it to the end. I was talking to a young man a few days ago, and he said, and I'm extending the invitation now, and then we're going to do communion, and I'll be through in just a few minutes. I was talking to a young man few days ago and he talked about 
without getting into in details, the life he used to live and now. And he say, I was that. But now I know the Lord so well and have such a relationship with the Lord that even my mama can't make me doubt it. Now that, that's powerful. Because you know, boys are usually close to the mother. And he said that my relationship with God now is such that even my mama couldn't make me doubt it. Do you have that kind of relationship? If not, you can. You can. Get in touch with us. Inbox us. Message us. And call us. We will. Reach out to you. God bless you. As we get ready for our communion. Today, I know that the members of Bethlehem Baptist Church, Storyville, know where our minds run when I do just a little of this song. As we get ready to go into prayer for the communion, our minds run back to one that served with us until the Lord called him home. Remember, remember. Thou art the sinner's friend, Lord, remember me, O oh, Christ. Thou art the sinner's friend, O oh, Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come now at this time, Lord, to give you thanks. We thank you, dear God, for the opportunity to share in your shed blood and your broken body. We thank you, dear God, that you shed your blood on Calvary. You allowed your son Jesus to come in the form of human, live a life of purity, a sinless life that he may make a sacrifice for us out on Calvary. Shed his blood, they tore his body apart, yes. but yet a bone was not broken. But he did it, Lord, for all of us. Yes. And then, Lord, you told us that when we come to this moment mm -hmm. to examine our self, yes, help us, dear God, each person to examine our own self yes. and see if we are fit. What do you mean, Lord, fit? Because I have sinned and come short. But Lord, do I have the right frame of mind? Is my mind on you? Am I forgiven of those who have wronged me? Have I, oh God, asked forgiveness of those I've wronged? Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Yes. help me, dear Lord, Lord, to each time we do this, to draw closer to you and to one another. Yes, Lord. Oh Lord, we recognize, dear God, that if it was based on, the, on our righteousness, we could none of us take it. But we thank you, dear God, is based on the fact that we have given Jesus our sins yes. Yes. and taken on his righteousness mm -hmm. by faith. Yes. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, thank you. that as we commune together, yes, Lord. we draw closer to you mm -hmm. and to one another. Yes. In the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes, the Lord told us in Paul's writing to example ourselves. Check yourself. Mm -hmm. Check yourself. Mm -hmm. 
See where your mind is. Yes. Don't let the devil take your mind back. Mm -hmm. See where your mind is right now. See where your mind is. Don't spend your time looking back and thinking about the past and remembering what you might have done in the past before you gave the Lord. And even when you stepped off the track before you came to the Lord and sometimes you stepped off the track, don't keep looking back there. Amen. Amen. Leave it behind. Yes. And bless God's name. And he will bless you. Yes. I pray that you are ready this morning. You're ready to partake of his body and of his shed blood. As I present it to Sister Lyles and we take it together, I instruct you to take it. Take your bread in your hand, your cracker, wafer, or whatever you have. And remember that the night when Jesus entered into the upper room with his disciples. And don't worry about who around you because Jesus knew who Judas was when he administered the Lord's Supper. And he didn't stop because Judas was at the table. Matter of fact, he said, one that dips in the bowl with me is going to betray me. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about who's around you. When he had taken it in his hand, he broke bread and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat ye all of this, for this is my broken body. Let us eat together. And then like Mary, he took the cup. And he lifted it up and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples and said, drink ye all of this. For well, this is my shed blood. Let us drink it together. And the Bible said that when they had finished, they went out into the Mount of Olives. But we don't have a mountain that we can go out in. But we can always close out with a song. G. Jesus keep me near thy cross, there's a precious fountain free. for prayer and 6.30 for Bible class. Until then, God bless you is our prayer. We thank God for you. Good day. Amen.